Hi, welcome to this video showing you how to get the MPU 6050 working with the 80 Tiny 85. Uh, rather than keep you around to uh, discover whether or not this video is for you, let me just show you exactly what you'll uh, be seeing uh, at the end of this explanation. I've got over here uh, an 80 Tiny 85, it's hooked up to uh, a display, an ITC display, uh, it's hooked up to the um, MPU 6050 and it's also got a serial port back to the Arduino IDE. So let me just plug this in and you should be able to see uh, exactly what we'll be getting at the end of this video. Bon Gyro it came up with just there in case you didn't see it. Right, if I move uh, the... Uh, well let me get the serial monitor up first. There we go, let me clear output. If I move this uh, MPU 6050 it will detect it and it will show stirred on the screen with a milliseconds reading. If, on the other hand, I uh, decide to um, uh, flip the screen, flip the MPU 6050, you'll see shaken on the display there with a millisecond. Let me do that again. There you go, the milliseconds has changed. And I can flip it in any direction and it should be able to detect anything over about 1.75G. So two things will come out of this. You'll get, uh, well, six things in fact. You'll get, to, you'll get to see how the data can be output onto the serial monitor. You'll get to see how the data can be put out onto an OLED display. And it's not just the data. We're taking the data and turning it into information. We're getting the data of the uh, gyro. We're getting the data of the accelerometer. And we're doing something intelligent with it, turning it into information. In the case of the accelerometer, has the device been shaken or tapped? In the case of the gyro, has the device been moved? Now, why would you want to do that? Well... Well, it's as big as your imagination. If something's being moved, perhaps it's being stolen. So you can make a bike alarm if the thing is, is moved, uh, then, you know, set off an alarm. If, if, if the, uh, something's being dropped, uh, you could detect damage or something, or damage-inducing uh, shock, induce, dam detect damage-inducing shock, or uh, gesture, you know, tap yes, or shake to clear a, a game score, or those sorts of things. That's really up to you. But I'll show you how to get those raw values uh, out, out of the sensors. Uh, within the 80 t constrained 80 tiny 85 uh, environment. So I took a look at the uh, spec for this and it looked pretty straightforward, the data sheet. It was just a command response type thing on registers. You know, you, you wrote something to a register or you read something from a register. It was as simple as that. Uh, but I also noticed there were plenty of libraries around and I tried to avoid the libraries. I always try and avoid libraries where I can because many of them are written for the the UNO environment with loads and loads of memory. We've only got 8K here, and often those libraries pull in other libraries, which assume you know are just like a, a an unlimited amount of, of flash RAM to uh, store your program. So it's best to avoid them if you can. And this really looked like a very straightforward uh, use of the wire library, or in this case, the tiny wire M library. Let's go straight to the code. Um, blah blah blah. There we go. Right. Um, all we have over here is this layout, and there's the, there's the breadboard layout on the screen in front of you. We've got the uh, daisy chain I2C to the display and to the MPU 6050, and we've got power, and I've got a TX line back through the UNO to the PC so I can see the serial monitor output. Uh, that's this thing up here. Um, and down here, on the OLED display, all I write out is if the device has been shaken or had a shock. So, uh, we include the TinyWire M library, which is a smaller version of wire, the OZ OLED library um, from Oscar Liang, and uh, software serial uh, to communicate with the um, uh, TX uh, port on the UNO. So uh, it, is, it is an ITC, and ITC devices are great, obviously, for the AT Tiny 85 with a, a pin shortage or a uh, paucity of pins. Uh, the uh, address of the uh, 6050 out of the box is 68. If you want it to use another address, say you wanted to use two of these things uh, on the same microcontroller, then pull AD0 up to 5 volts or, or 3.3 volts. This is a 5 volt board. The chip itself is 3.3 volts. Uh, some people were su suggesting that uh, I2C is not very stable at 3.3 volts, so just bear that in mind if you do go to 3.3 volts. Others are saying you have to pull int pin down to ground. I haven't found I had to do that at all, but maybe just bear that in mind if you run into a few problems. Uh, the, the quiescent current mode is very difficult to describe. There are so many modes this can operate in. There's, there's like a, a low frequency mode, there's a sleep mode, there's a, 
there's a, a, a bunch of modes, and whether you're using one sensor or the other sensor, it's very hard to get a, get a quiescent current mode, but if all axes are, are being interrogated and it's firing on all six cylinders, you, you're looking at four to five milliamps for the chip itself, and with this board stuff on it, maybe there's a buck converter on there or a voltage divider, then you're probably looking at somewhere in the region of seven, eight, nine, maybe even ten milliamps. So it may be something you don't want to leave switched on all the time, maybe you want to power it on whenever you need to use it, but... Um, uh, it's 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 you know typical of a sensor five 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 milliamps is probably what you're looking at uh, at a minimum to keep it running all the time. Right over here we just set up the software serial monitor. I've done videos on, on both the software serial monitor that's on the screen right now. If you're going to use the software serial monitor to get your data out of the AT Tiny eighty five, I really recommend watching this video if you haven't done it before. There are so many hoops to jump through to get this working both on using the UNO as an ISP and getting the 8 megahertz clock rate burned into the chip and all sorts of bits and bobs. Read that if you get stuck. Don't put comments in here if you will on that. Take a look at that other video. And uh, there's a separate video on the OLED display as well. That's also on the screen right now. Um, so I just write a title out to the screen, Bond Gyro, because I'm using Shaken and Stirred. Um, clear the display. And here we set up and this is the simplest thing. All we do is write zeros to the power register, zeros to the config register for the gyro, zeros to the config register for the accelerometer. Now, uh, I would say that having written this this morning, this code, I should have probably have used uh, the 4G range on the accelerometer. It's just too sensitive flicking it. Sometimes when I move it, I get a shaken, but that's down to you to, to configure this for your own, own requirements. You have to write a, a bit into one of those uh, um, uh, uh, settings there to get the 4G range, but this is, this is out of the box. The settings, uh, uh, the base settings are 250 degrees per second and 2G plus and minus range. Just one other point, uh, uh, you know, if, if, you're, if you're detecting 1G in the Z plane, is, there's always going to be 1G, isn't there? Good gravity, you know, uh, you've only got a spare 1G in that direction. According you know, to gravity, this is already accelerating upwards by 1G. So, uh, you know, if you tap it upwards even more, uh, you're only going to get a ceiling of 1G. So 4G would give us a 3G limit on the Z plane. And don't forget, if it's turned up this way, uh, I'm afraid, you know, your, 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 your 1G is now working on the, on the Y plane. Uh, on the minus Y plane. So, you know, you would use a combination of the gyro and the uh, uh, accelerometer to work out where you need to measure your acceleration. But if it's only relative acceleration, which is what I'm doing in this video, then it's, it's not such a big deal. Um, so we have those registers, six Baker, one Baker, and one Charlie. Set them all to zero, that's the power and the config settings for the gyro and the accelerometer. And then I've got this routine here called get acceleration and get gyro. Let's have a look at uh, get gyro. Uh, get gyro, all we do is uh, we uh, pull out the MPU address, uh, six, uh, what was it, six Baker? No, what was it, what was it, what was it? I've forgotten it already. Six eight, okay, the accelerator, the, the, the MPU address is six eight. Um, and then uh, the acceleration data register, we write that out because that's where we're going to extract six bytes from, representing the uh, upper and lower byte of each of the X, Y, and Z registers. And this is a bitwise operation to get the upper, upper byte and a bitwise operation to get the lower byte. Uh, I could put all these on one line. I'm not sure how th these would be executed in the right order, so I'll split them out uh, for all of you. Um, uh, Arduino experts out there, and it returns those into Axel X, Axel Y, Axel Z integers. And then uh, get gyro, similar thing, the, except the address register is 43, and it gets the six bytes for the X, Y, and Z gyro register. So that's getting the values, and now you've got the values. And uh, we move rapidly on to doing something with them. And so I've got this routine called if shaken, and what shaken does, it detects whether or not the uh, values of the gyro are beyond a certain limit. I mean, I've got a, uh, an upper limit of about 32,000 on the gyro, uh, 16,000 of which is 1G, which will always be on, don't forget, in the Z plane. Uh, and I just work out if it's, how, if it's above 20,000 to see if it's a, a receipt. Let's take a look at it, actually, it's shaken. Here we go. If the absolute value, oh, there's one thing on absolute. I'm using absolute because it's very simple and straightforward. It is quite expensive in terms of memory. You can do this with arithmetic, a little bit cheaper on memory. But if the absolute value, i.e. 
uh, it's greater than either plus or minus 20,000, or the y value is greater than plus or minus 20,000, or the z value is greater than plus or minus 32,700. Because don't forget, if this is lying level all the time, we've already got one g acting on us, then it returns true. And if it's true, then what it does is it prints out the uh, millis to the screen and shaken, and then prints out millis to the OLED display and shaken. Uh, the other routine is, uh, oh yeah, don't forget the debug statement at the heading. If you want to see all these individual values for debug purposes, just uncommon the define at the heading at, in, in the top of the sketch and you should be able to print all these out and see them. Oh yeah, one thing on this thing here. I had to cast uh, the first variable uh, as a long. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, there's a bug in there somewhere. I couldn't be bothered to check it out, but putting long in the first variable seemed to sort out the formatting. So. Um, if, if you can take that out, maybe it works for you. I don't know what libraries you're working, working with, but maybe I've got an old library on, um, on OZ OLED. I've no idea. Now, if stirred, stirred is very, very simple. We've already got some gyro settings, so it's got some X, Y, and Z settings. Uh, we just then go and take another reading, uh, as you'll see. We're stirred. There we go, stirred. So we save the current uh, X, Y, and Z readings, and then... Uh, I, we, we get a new set, get gyro readings again. Uh, so we've got a new set in gyro X, gyro Y, gyro Z, and I just uh, just uh, find out what the difference is, and if the difference is over 300. Why 300? Well, it just works. I mean, maybe it should be higher, maybe it should be 500. It's quite sensitive, but you want to filter out any noise, such as, you know, maybe something banging the table, or, you know, maybe a breeze or something. There is some sort of, you know, some sort of interference can actually, you know, give you a value of one or two very, very easily. So you want to filter out that noise level, and if it is greater than 300, whatever value you want it to set it to, uh, then it returns uh, stirred. So that's it. Uh, very straightforward. Um, uh, you've seen it in action. Uh, I'll show you one more time again. Uh, let me uh, put the recording on. There we go. And if I flip this, there we go. Shaken has moved because you know it's changed because the millisecond. Look at the milliseconds there, ending in 198. Flick it again, ending in 657. Uh, up here, we write out millis and we write out shaken. So just moving that, and you can see uh, it's moving. So. Lots of uh, uh, opportunity there to uh, integrate that. The code's in the description. Uh, any questions, uh, leave them in the comments. If you've got any questions in particular about using the IDE serial uh, monitor display, please uh, take a look at that other video. Uh, I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you did, give me a thumbs up. All the best. Cheers.